Welcome to iHeart Geek. And welcome to an animal filled episode of iHeart Geek. <laughs> uh, <it's> a- <laughs> Well, yeah, with, with someone that was trying to lip sync with me, it was kind of like lip syncing with an animal, I think, on that one. Yeah. Lies. He, he, <laughs> Mr. Ed style, just peanut butter in the mouth. He did look pretty ridiculous. Did you feel bad for that horse ever? <laughs> no, I got to eat peanut butter all the time. <laughs> so we're, we have kind of a weird um, <laughs> episode today because we're actually, we never do this, but we're actually doing a show around a movie that none of us will probably see. I'm, I, might, I, I mean, I'm going to see it. You're going to see it? Yeah, I'm going to see it. We're doing Dr. We're doing Dr. Doolittle. Which is, he, he's a guy that does little. But let's be fair. This is the <laughs> sixth or seventh remake this is of, a, of a Dr. Doolittle. Yes. Yeah. Uh, probably the third, like, third most well known one because mm. most people know two of the previous ones pretty yeah, well. Well, everyone knows the cartoon version, I think. I don't know that one. Yeah, I think I, I know that's the, the one I'm least familiar version? with. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, she, yeah they, they think there is. I just know yeah. the Anthony Newley musical version. You know, I, yeah, I've heard of that one, but, but I, I mean, I know the Rex Harrison. I think. Version, dare I say, I think this will be the best one. And I'm not a do, I'm think? not a huge Do Little fan, but uh-huh. I mean, what can't Robert Downey Jr. do now and make it gold? That's true. Have kids. Does he have kids? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, biologically. I don't no, know. he just had one. Biologically? Uh, huh. Oh, you mean like he personally has kids? Yeah. Okay, I mean, so he has what Robert Downey Jr. can't do. We veered off into the weird again. He can't birth a child. So that's the one thing huh. I know he can't do. You don't Other know than that. that, he could probably do anything. Okay. Yeah. I think this movie's going to be good. And I think one of the things about Dr. Little, yeah, sorry, Dr. Doolittle, that's so cool is I think everyone has their own experiences with it. Just going around the table real quick, mm-hmm. we all had a different version that we're really familiar with. Yeah. You're and familiar with the speaking cartoon. Speaking of going around the table. Oh, yeah. You know, I didn't do that. So so this animal right here, I'm Dub, and um, I wish I could talk to uh, any animal, really. Yeah, and animals. I think they would be a great... I'd have some great conversations, and then I think that eventually I would hate it because I'd be like, shut up. Because <laughs> I, I would love to talk to some things that I don't think would shut up eventually. Yeah. Like us. <laughs> uh, you know what? Y'all said it, not me. I, I'm just I, saying. I, I love I y'all. <laughs> Go ahead, Courtney. I miss Geeky Page. I... Yeah, I guess talking to animals would be cool. I would probably want to talk to fish because I like being underwater. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> okay, well, you know, can I ask this real quick? Don't mm-hmm. fish only have like a memory of like six hours or something? Yeah, they would be fine for me because I am kind of like a fish in the brain. It's a new orbit, conversation so. every time. So you right. have a yeah memory of six hours. Me so, and Dory. No, it, it It'd be like Memento only, and Dory. Only remember, like a couple minutes at a time. Me and Dory. <laughs> okay, nobody just caught that. Yeah, I know. We we yeah. got it, Dub. We were yeah, there. We got it. It just wasn't funny. But uh, um, <laughs> why are you so mean? But the next time I tell the joke, it'll be hilarious because it'll what? be the first time listening. Exactly. <laughs> hey guys, I'm uh, Blize. I'm your YouTube guy and tech guy of the show. Um, it's 2020, a, a new year now, and I'm I'm here. I'm not going to be as grumpy this year. Oh, this is this is our know. first episode of 2020. This is our yep. first episode of 2020. Happy New Year! I'm I gonna give, I'm gonna give go, that title yeah. back to Jason. No, I was kind of hoping you go further and like. <laughs> oh, you want me to go deeper? Yeah. Into it? Okay. No one. Yep. Wants All right, more. we'll do it. I'd be cheerful by the time this year ends. <laughs> you're on the show. I was um, going to see it. <laughs> I'm PB Jason. I'm not going to say what animals I would talk to because that's on my list. Um, okay. Fair enough. But I do know <laughs> that so I wish there were some. I wish there were some humans. That I know speak English, that I could have a better kind of clear, clarity-filled conversation. Because with they sometimes. mumble, or because they're not intelligent enough to talk to. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping I'm not on that list because that'll. No, be I talk forever. to you all the time. What? Yeah. See. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, nobody here is on that list. Everybody here is smart, especially right the now. college graduate over there across the table. So let, let's ask this question first off. If you can talk to animals, is it an annoyance or is it a superpower? Is it something you would even want? Um, let, let's start with you, uh, Blize, a writer of the show today. <laughs> I think that this is a hard question to answer because at the beginning, it would, think about it. it would be very cool. But as time went on, it would... There would be some nonsense animals 
There's definitely some nonsense animals in the world. So you think some would just be less interesting to talk to than others? Yeah, if you could turn it off and on, then I'm in. But if it's a constant where you just like regular people just walking around and you can hear whatever something is saying, then at that point it's a it could be get bad real quick. Well, that makes me think of that really terrible uh, Mel Gibson movie. Uh, what a girl wants, or what women want. What women want, or something when like that. When he could read their mind and yeah. turn into a cur- it's real nice at first, and then it's like it doesn't turn off. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's how talking to animals would be. What What about you, Miss Geeky Page? Um, I kind of agree with Blize. I mean, at first it would be very very cool, and then it's like, do they just continue to chatter? Because like I had birds at one point in time, and they never shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so now I would just know what they were talking about all day long, and I'm not sure I can handle that. So uh, You can't really say also what they're screaming because this is a family-friendly show. <laughs> I, I don't know what they're saying. They were just, they had a lot to talk about. Well, they, they scream, your shirt's here. Your, your I Heart Geek shirt is here from Redbubble. It's here. It's here. And they do that yeah, all day know. long. Which is awesome. <laughs> you like that little pro- product mm-hmm, placement? Nice and the nice ironic play. thing about that is it was like, like birds of paradise, like parrots and stuff like that is yeah. what you're talking about? No, yeah, I, I had parakeets. Okay, parakeets. Had, can talk oh, par- can parakeets learn how to mimic? No, no I don't um, think I so. I had three parakeets and a cockatiel, and the cockatiel would just scream. He would wolf whistle yeah. constantly. Yeah. That's why his name was Valentino. <laughs> but the the parakeets would just sit there, and they would just from sun up to sundown just Cheap. jabber, sunrise, jabber, sunset. jabber, 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 jabber. I'm like, what do you guys have to talk about all day long? So if I like understood what they were saying, it would get really frustrating, I think, because the chirps, I could just kind of tune out. Mm-hmm. But if they're over there, yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. yeah, they're no. fine. Uh, I think it'd be cool. You know, when I used to uh, D&D, so like druids were always fun because you could that was one of their powers, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. talk to animals and stuff. So, um, no, I don't really see a downside. I mean, I know what you guys are talking about, like a, d- a dog, yeah. obviously a dog uh, while awake, mm-hmm. the whole time be like, hey, hey, what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> hey, hey, what you doing? What you doing? What are you eating? Is that for me? You know, and it'd be like, dogs, I can see dogs getting a little tedious, but overall, I think it'd be cool, man, because then you would know which ones want to kill you. Fair enough. And which ones think you're okay? What if all of them wanted to kill you? Right. What if well, you no, turned it on? Do want to then kill you. you could you could very easily determine the danger level, <laughs> because if it's a lizard, you know you're probably going to be okay. If it's a Great Dane, then you might want to get the heck out of there. You know. Years ago, there was an episode of Dexter's Laboratory. You guys remember that show? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Love that show. <laughs> now there was an episode that. He, the, for some reason, Dexter gets a stray dog, comes to his house, and it's barking constantly. He's flipping out. He goes, what's, what's going on, boy? What's going on? What's going on? And this goes on for about three minutes. Then he says, I'm going to build a machine to make you all make you talk. And he makes him talk. And then he discovers this is the most boring thing I've ever heard in my life. Hey, hey, it's the thing, the thing. Look at the thing. Look at the thing. And it goes on forever. And that's why I wouldn't want it because I think that's all they have. Well, to here's say. the thing. You guys all saw the thing. Up. It's you the saw, thing. You saw uh-huh. Up. Yeah, Doug. Yeah, yeah. That Doug. is yep. dogs. Mm-hmm. I mean, they they nailed that. That I yeah, I would want to hear it in my head, but I would like it if they you could put a collar on a dog that would talk, or whatever you want. Just take it off whenever. Or a fish. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite ones is when in Rick and Morty, when mm-hmm. Morty makes the can't remember if he puts something on where he can hear him or he makes him talk about the squirrels. He hears the squirrels talking, and then Rick finds oh, out about yeah. it, and they have to like jump universes because it's just—it's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> so why is it so? I mean, it's a, we, we we all know Doctor Doolittle from whatever our affiliation is, and everybody would like to at least for a couple of minutes be able to talk to an animal. Why is it so pretty much universally appealing? Is it just are we nosy and we just can't yeah, stand because, not knowing? Because we can't. Because it's the uncrackable. Mystery, you can make your best guesses. You know, Jane Goodall and the chimps and all that. Mm-hmm. You could take a really good, you know, best educated guess, but you don't know. Mm-hmm. And then you got really mysterious animals that you never, you just don't know. So, yeah, it's that mystery box yeah. that you I th- want to crack. I think, too, is um, as humans, we we build relationships with a lot of animals, too. Mm-hmm. And whether it's your, your dog or your cat or your fish or um, even just animals that you grow up loving that may not necessarily be pets, you, you, you can build up so much of a relationship with them. But getting to that point of communication, like that would be the next level of being able to build even more onto that. Well, can I ask you guys a question? I mean, 
if you take take your you know um, fantastic imagination out of it and look at look at things completely logically, would you think that your pet says what you think it says? I don't think it says what I think it says, but or even its feelings. Right? What I we assign feelings for these. That's for true. Um, what I would love to have from my pets is to for them to be able to tell me when they need or want something like there's just those days where like your dog f- just seems like they're sick or they're just not acting the way that they normally do and you just want to be like what's wrong tell me what's wrong so i can help you that's mm-hmm. nice actually. yeah <laughs> no that is yeah um Go, no, go ahead. You, you, uh, no, I was going to say the same kind of thing. Like, especially like today makes me that makes me think of today. Chaplin was pretty stressed out, and I had no idea why yeah, he was stressed out. He like had his kibble. He asked to go outside. He had, he uh-huh. was doing okay, and I wasn't going anywhere. But he was just whiny all day long. Mm-hmm. And if I had the ability to know what he was saying when I said, "What do you need?" He would be able to like legitimately tell me instead of just sitting there whining and me trying to figure out what he needed well they have so. those people that are like dog whispers yeah. or, horse whispers yeah, or whatever <laughs> and no i mean a lot of those guys are pretty legit on it and not because of the weird psychological connection yeah. but because they know how to read an animal yeah yeah mm-hmm. you know is that talking is that dr doolittle i don't know well here's here's the thing the two, the two yeah. most common house pets would be dogs and cats mm-hmm. would we agree most mm-hmm. common yeah all right so i have one of each right now um for me, the dog is not a mystery. And actually, none of my dogs that I've owned over the years have mm-hmm. ever been mysteries. They've been pretty... Open book. You know, open book, right? So yeah. what are they thinking? What are they doing? You know, why are they barking at nothing? That might be the only thing. It's like, why are you barking at nothing? <laughs> and maybe they'd answer. Mm-hmm. But so dogs, dogs aren't mysterious to me. Now, the cat and any cat that I've owned, cats have complex minds. First of all, I already think cats can speak English with each other. It's just their great secret. <laughs> and they don't, and they don't tell us. But um, no, there's complex thoughts that go through the minds of cats. Now I the, believe the, something I've noticed about cat people—they they always feel like their cats are a lot more intelligent than I think they are. I don't know if uh, I'm going to say no, intelligent, I mean, yeah. but I would say um, conniving. <laughs> but, but, but dog dog people that that are into dogs, they have one way of looking at people that have cats and every person has a cat thinks of them the same way and it's it's like a hyper intelligent almost i think it i think that goes both ways because i know exactly what you're talking about when i i'm not a cat person i'm not the biggest fans of them so when people say like cats are way smarter than dogs i just am like i don't get on it but at the same time i think dogs are the one of the most miraculous creatures on the planet like i love dogs to no end and i can i can see the argument both ways well i am an owner of both Uh like i said and i've been a cat and dog owner many cat you know several Mm -hmm. cats several dogs and um they're very different yeah they definitely think differently Mm -hmm. so if you um like i said the whole conversational thing i think a cat would be because no i mean uh, no, I mean they're they're not smarter per se. They're both they're both probably on the same realm they're of intelligence. S- smart in their own way, but they're different. Yeah, they're just very different. I think in the way they think. Yeah, and cats are mysterious. Mm-hmm. Dogs, not so much. Spoken like a cat, and uh, that's not an insult, <laughs> but that's how a cat person would, would talk. Mm-hmm. Because about it's cat. true. Yeah, I get that. I yeah. definitely get that uh, that argument for sure. I I think a, a cat is is like. Uh, world's worst roommate it takes and takes and takes and if it feels like giving you nah, attention, they, they it, don't nah, no, that's, like, yeah. but it's not true because as i said i have one i've had several and they can be very affectionate yeah, very that's, it. That, that, that's not meant as an insult to any cat people <laughs> at all and, and no it's, i you you love what you love I you guess. heard you it know, here you're first bo- you're born you can, with that cat lover you're you not. can only truly understand a cat if you've if you've owned one to be honest i've owned one this okay has never been my thing and that, well, nothing go. wrong with that i'm just yeah, I don't even yeah. know how we got onto this. I don't know. <laughs> you know let, let, let's jump off this train right now. Let's move on to our 3366. <laughs> or is it 6633? Ooh. 
66% truth, 33% lies. Can you tell the difference? All right, guys, here we go. And I botched this one, so... You sure did. (laughs) What a botch, man. I apologize to my fellow cast members and also to the listeners. Uh, Normally, it is two truths, one lie. Today, we're going to find the truth within the lies. So today is a 3366? It's inverted. Sure. (laughs) <laughs> two lies and a truth. Two two lies and a truth. Two of these statements will be lies and one will be a bold face truth. truth. Does it work? <laughs> oh, yeah. no, that doesn't work at all. That's yeah. horrible. It, it works. It works. Okay, if you say so. That's why I did it the way that I did it. No. <laughs> <laughs> you got confused. All right, here we go, guys. So the first statement, is it a truth or is it a lie? Uh, before Eddie Murphy... Tom Cruise was considered for the role of Dr. Doolittle in the 1998 release. Uh, The second statement is, the first animal Dr. Doolittle ever speaks with is a parrot named Petey. And the third, Dr. Doolittle was created in the trenches of World War I. Mm. Courtney, you're first. I think number one is the truth. Number one is the truth? Yeah. I think number three is the truth. Think number three is the truth? I don't think I know number three is the truth. <laughs> uh, that is correct. Sorry, Woo-hoo! Courtney. That was These two gentlemen guess, are right? the the winners. The truth okay. is um, that Dr. Doolittle was created in the trenches of World War I uh, by Hugh Lofting. Uh, he created the character while writing letters to his children. And cool. he, he wrote the because, to expand on that Very slightly, nice. if the news of the moment was too terrible or too boring... He would write about Dr. Dr. Doolittle. Doolittle. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, well, I thought number one seemed too silly for words. I couldn't see Tom, <laughs> Tom Cruise. Cruise doing that. Maybe Tom Hanks. If you would have said Tom Hanks, it would have been a toss-up Ooh. for me. That would have been good. <laughs> I would have liked to have seen that. That would have Dr. been Doolittle. good. That would, that yeah. would be good, yeah. Uh, and then the, the second one, I seem to remember he talked to a cat first, at least the Eddie Murphy version. I don't think the parrot's name is Petey. That's my It's opinion. Polynesia. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what he it was? He does talk to a parrot, but mm-hmm. I didn't he remember. He just talks to a parrot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what the first animal he speaks with is. Yeah, no, I don't remember yeah. either. Okay, so how classically, do you, how do you want to how do you want to call a winner out on this one? Um, Sudden death match. Oh, yeah, geez. fight. You win. Right now. <laughs> argue, argue game. a little bit more about cats versus dogs. <laughs> Who wins that argument? Well, dogs, yeah. dogs are superior in every possible way. How that? <laughs> yes. Hey, I pet your dogs. I'm just saying. I know your dogs are so much better than any your cat. Your dog naps Don't with win. me. <laughs> Like, That's true. <laughs> like just, Jason, you're the something. only one that needs to come over and spend time with my dogs. Oh, I, I, I <laughs> the love, little I love one's dogs. weary of me, but the big one likes to lay right on oh top of me and watch gosh, TV. Doesn't he? The the big one. She likes to cuddle. Yeah, she's sure. a cuddler. Right. She was cuddling <laughs> the entire time we were watching My Hero. Yep. yep. <laughs> I was gonna say dogs are funnier, but then again, I can't really say that because I cats think, yeah. cats are hysterical, especially when they met mess Chaplin. up. Oh yeah. They mess up and they get embarrassed. And they're like, I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It didn't happen. (laughs) Jason, how are you so antisocial? You haven't met Chaplin. You haven't met met, uh, Bliza's dog. You've only known my dogs. In all fairness, me and Courtney have only been around for, what, six months now? I feel like it's longer than that now. No. It, it, you know, it's just sort of like hell. Are you, there is no you've time been a, you've been around for a lot yeah. lot longer than I. Yeah. Have, I'm sure so. I will. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> It'll happen. Uh, so let's just call it a tie. Okay, yeah. I'll take it. Do you want me to flip a coin? I'll flip no, a coin. No, I'm good. Okay. I don't care that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Okay, so there are like what ten different versions of of Doctor Doolittle, and we oh, have um, Rex Harrison. Eddie Murphy, we have the original books, we have the cartoon version. I think he was even in the radio plays, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what? what's your favorite and why? Um, hmm, favorite. Okay, so Dr. Doolittle isn't big on my radar, but mm-hmm. um, my I guess the first time that I learned about him was actually in middle school, and I read the, uh, the Puddle By Adventures, which was an anthology book mm-hmm. that was written in the 50s. And it actually takes several stories from the books that were written in the 20s in the chronological order. Mm-hmm. Kind of makes an anthology series. And I read it as an assignment. And I thought, eh, yeah, this is interesting. It was cool. I read it. Um, and then eventually down the road, I saw the Rex Harrison movie. And that was like a bad acid trip. And there were <laughs> giant snails. And there were two sided llamas with no butt. And um, Push me, pull you. 
Yeah, the push and pull you exactly, which, as I said, presents a real biological conundrum. <laughs> um, but um, it's like cat dog. Yeah, it's similar. It's, like cat it's literally cat dog. It's just, but <laughs> instead llamas. of llamas, cat and a dog, it's llamas. Right, and uh, so yeah, I saw and I saw the Rex Harrison version, and you know. I mean, I sir, the name is certainly known. It's yeah. it's it's always there. And then, then with uh with Downey Jr. coming out with a film, yeah, it'll get. I'm sure it'll get a, a view. Mm-hmm. Like when it goes to Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the one that resonates with me the most is the 1998 version. The uh, Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy, yeah, Eddie Murphy version. <sighs> that was one of the. That's when he started to go so cheesy. <laughs> uh, for me though, I was. Eight years old, so uh, that was one of the movies that like you were. I would. Nineteen ninety eight. I was eight in nineteen ninety eight. I just got out of the navy in nineteen ninety eight. Nineteen ninety eight. You were how old? There's eight, no eight way. Old. Yeah, I'm done with you. Yeah, I was eight years old. <laughs> wow. So I that was, was one of the movies that I would rent I from Blockbuster and watch <laughs> over and over and over. I worked at Blockbuster <laughs> before you I were probably born. rented. No, it. before you were born, actually. <laughs> Wow. Anyways, okay. Ahead. Okay. No. No. Let's not stop. Stop. He's a young person. That's not his <laughs> this fault. This is our latest episode and of Quit. Hey, Why are you so freaking yeah. young? Right. Quit no, having age envy, and, all of you. No. No. Nah, and definitely, I, mean, like, I agree. Yeah. You hit those things at those certain ages yeah. and, and it, leave those big impressions. Yeah. Everybody mm-hmm. has. And that's thing. that's one yeah. of yours. Doctor so Doolittle. I get it. Eddie Murphy's definitely one of mine. Mine was the was the Rex Harrison musical version. Um, I remember the song "If I Could Talk to the Animals." Learn I the remember languages. the giant snail as well um (laughs) will i see the robert downey jr one probably but i have the nieces and they're Mm. four and six so Mm -hmm. i mean i end up watching all that that kid stuff i mean i'm i'm kind of a big kid so i watch it a lot of times anyways but i'm sure the nieces are gonna want to go see the talking bear and well that that segues into what i want to talk what we need to talk about next which is the robert downey jr version yeah now I am actually looking forward to this one more than I've looked forward to any other Doctor Doolittle. Mm-hmm. I've never been a huge fan. I, I just I, for whatever reason, I, it just didn't I didn't click with me. But I think Robert Downey Jr. is going to take it. I don't think it's going to feel like a kids' movie either. I really I think it's going to feel. It's not going to feel like Iron Man, but it might feel like um, Sherlock Holmes. How good how good that was. Mm-hmm. I think that's the kind of feeling we're going to get off of this Robert Downey Jr. Um, so. Honestly, I this is this is the first time I've ever said Doctor Doolittle. And I'm expecting something out of it. Well, you're not yeah. going to be alone in that regard because Downey Jr. is is he's brilliant. You know, household name. Yeah, he's now. just just top notch actor right now. Now, wouldn't you have liked yeah. to have seen him in the '80s when he was still high? No, no. <laughs> I did see him in the '80s no, when he was no, still see high. Him, no, see do Doctor Doolittle. Doctor Doolittle when he was still high. Yeah. Mm, I well, don't know. That was the normal <laughs> parties he went to. He was Doctor Doolittle. I think the. The voice cast too. I mean, yeah, you have Robert Downey Jr. Playing. Oh, lots of cool voice. Yeah. Yeah, you have. We have. We have R. D. J. as as Doctor Doolittle, but you've got people like Octavia Spencer mm-hmm. and Emma Thompson. Rami Malek is in Rami there. Rami Malek, oh, wow. Tom Holland. I mean, yeah. there's like, yeah. a, there, and they're a lot. Most of them are vo- doing the voices of the animals. Emma Thompson is Polynesia the parrot, which is like his mm. number one pet. Yeah. So I mean, the voice acting and the cast is just phenomenal across the board yes for it, it is yeah. it has it, the it potential like to be a great be, it doesn't look like it's going to be cheese ball Mm-mm. and that's honestly kind of what you expect going into a do little and those big yeah. stars love doing stuff like that because yes i could come into my underwear and i'm gonna get paid yeah, yeah literally because right. i'm in the voice in booth <laughs> yeah so um i think it's gonna i think it's gonna do well it looks good i i'm what excited to see it i when I first saw the trailer for it, I wasn't expecting much from it, but seeing the last um, the last couple trailers that have come out, um, and just I really enjoy Robert Downey Jr. and almost everything I've seen him in, so I just I think it's gonna be good. Yeah, the it's- CGI is gonna be off the hook. I don't know. No, the CGI is going to be. A little, I think there's going to be some parts of it where the CGI is going to be a little rough. It's I'm not going to get. I'm actually kidding because it, CGI it's going to be better and, than we've seen. CGI in movies like that tends to be yeah. bad. It's CGI. not going to be cats bad. Right, right. Nothing is good. cats Nothing bad. Is cats bad. <laughs> do, do, can Doctor Doolittle understand that movie and why they did it? No one can understand that movie and why they did it. <laughs> not even Andrew Lloyd Webber, and he wrote the musical. <laughs> 
Wow, I love, that's I a little segue. Game, I don't like it? cats. It's more. It's more. It's more that they greenlit it, which is I weirder like than it being made. Musical, yeah. so. Well, it's, it's because I think he needed some money. He has to pay off the Sarah Brightman divorce. Still, I think after all these years. Oh, oh, plenty oh, no. Of money. Dudes oh. <laughs> okay, so but this movie comes out January sixteenth, which mm-hmm. is um, a week after this this drops. You you have time had a time week. travel. January seventh again. Like a week, it's far, but yeah. No, this no, this it's a week at right before. when this drops. Okay, yeah. January right. seventeenth. Gotcha. This, this comes out on Tuesday. Yes. Oh, yes. okay. So yeah, oh. then you'll have a week. So hopefully, this is getting you excited because I want to see any Robert Downey Jr. movie. Yeah, let's see it succeed. Yeah, I think it's going to do better than uh, Avengers Endgame. <laughs> <laughs> sure, why not? It'll be better than uh, yeah. Avatar. It may not do better, but it'll be better. We uh, know that we know that Robert Downey Jr. will make it to the end of this movie alive. We don't know that. <laughs> will he? <laughs> this is the dark and gritty. The dark and gritty. Dark to do little. <laughs> so if you if you now this isn't even on our notes, but I gotta ask this: if you could make a Doctor Doolittle movie, what medium would you use? That you're the director, the creator. What medium would you use? What what kind of feel would you like to see? That's just completely different than you think would people get. The people medium excited? I would use for any movie I would make would be Pixar animated. It would mm-hmm. be computer like that sort of thing. I feel like you lose a lot of the wonder, though, nah. about animals talking, because we see animals talking. Nah, you, yeah. could Pixar. you could do anything. That's the thing about <laughs> that medium. You could do anything. I would do a stage play. Okay. And I would get the puppeteers from Handspring Puppeteering. Okay. They're the ones that did the puppets for War Horse mm-hmm. um, to do the puppets for the animals. Comedy, gritty, serious... Dramatic. I do the I do the musical version. I the put music. the musical version on. So stage. your own version of of it, or just kind of a. I would retelling. take I would take the music from the the Rex Harrison version, and then make it hip hop. Incorporate that. No. Oh no, it's not Hamilton. <laughs> um, and then I would you know I would want puppets to be the animals, um, more on the more toward the war horse side than on the Little Mermaid side because those puppets were atrocious. Um. But yeah, I think life. What about Muppets? How about Muppets in your? Uh... It's too. I think the problem That's with too much. Muppets are too well known, and True. it would it would draw too much attention to the puppet, whereas like the puppets, like the puppets they use in the Lion King musical mm-hmm. and the puppets that they use in War Horse, you forget that they are puppets. Mm-hmm. They're yeah, that true. good. With the Muppets, you never really forget that they're the Muppets. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. So I mean, I would like to, but I think live theater too is. It just it lends itself to so much wonder, and since you can't CGI stuff in live theater, mm-hmm. it'd be interesting to cats see how did you it. create. You, you <laughs> say that, but cats did it real well. I I, I want to throw this no, in. No, that's not CGI. I want to throw that's this in because I think it'd be see. great. <laughs> I would like to see an episode, not with this current Doctor, with whichever Doctor we get next, of do- a Doctor Who episode of. Um, Doctor Doolittle meets Doctor Doolittle. Yeah, yeah, be interesting. Be cool. I think that would be. I, I'm not a big fan of this Doctor. Mm-hmm. We've talked. She about hasn't it. done much. Ugh. And Wait. the writer's been terrible. Right. So I'd like to find a new writer. And, but that I think that the Doctor Doolittle story would lend itself very well in the Doctor Who universe. And I think that'd be a lot of fun. I but think that'd probably be, to me. I think that I don't the, think you'd get more entertaining. It'd be more likely that Doctor Who would meet Lofting during World War One, <laughs> and then you'd basically change it all. The blah, same blah, thing, blah, blah, blah. like Shakespeare. I think that episode. Was uh, did, 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 did we get a, a feedback? Uh, I would do a. Uh, I do a dark and gritty Guy Ritchie <laughs> Doctor Doolittle. Are you I, with sure those you with I don't those know cuts if you're back not. and forth? I don't know if you're kidding or not. No, I, I would He's do kidding. it. You do a Fast and Furious version of Fast the, and the Furious. Uh, yes, snail oh. racing. <laughs> and with hip with the hip hop that I was talking about. Yeah, exactly with the hip hop soundtrack. Get Lin yes. Lin Manuel Miranda to do the do the new songs. Yes. Nice. Okay, now with that said, let's uh, jump over to our listener feedback because we had a lot. We did have a lot. And now let's see what all of our geek rock stars have to say. All right, guys, uh, let's get ready for our listener feedback. And the question we had for you folks uh, this week was, if you could have a conversation with any animal, who would it be and why? 
Did I say why at the end of a question? You did that say never why. happens. Why? Did we get rid of pe- people's questions that didn't say answer why? We did, actually. <laughs> uh, we got to teach y'all a lesson. I love right. y'all, but come on now. Right. By now, you guys should know. <laughs> With that said, there was a lot of feedback, so thanks, everybody. We really appreciate your feedback, but I did have to cut some of it out. I'm sorry if you didn't make the cut. <laughs> Doesn't mean I don't love that you. That sounds just... so hyper-competitive. Uh, I know. You had to make the cut. Right. It's like cheerleading squad. Some of you are now in the flag group instead oh, of the cheer squad. And some of you um, guys twirl fire. Exactly. So... <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right. There actually, there were a couple that didn't explain why, but I just like the answers, so they're staying in. All right. First off, we have Scott Skeen, and his was Mushu from Mulan. Ooh, that's a good one. Especially since the voice, it was voiced by Eddie Murphy. Agreed. Dishonor on you. Dishonor on your cow. (laughs) Uh, Carrie Shulton says she wants to talk to her cats. She wants to know why they love her Christmas trees so much and what are they looking at in the corners of my house. Uh, very, yep, I hear you. I think very. everybody, everybody right feels you. that when even and non-cat why are they so people. afraid of cucumbers? Exactly. Non-cat people are even thinking of that. <laughs> Dino from the... Huh? Podcast. This is his favorite thing to do. Says Battle Cat because I am a Masters, Masters of, of the Universe, universe nerd. <laughs> well, he is a nerd. His they, words... That just, love you, Dino. Quick, quick caveat. <laughs> he just recently posted a, a Masters of the Universe like honest trailer kind of thing uh-huh. for his huh, podcasting. Absolutely hysterical. You know, <laughs> totally I, I saw it. I haven't, I haven't looked at oh, it yet. Oh, it was hysterical. <laughs> Been working a million and a half hours. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so Daniel Houston says, Rocket, the stories that Grumpy Raccoon could tell. You know what? Yeah, but that he is great. Speaks he English. Speaks. So it's a little hard, but on, now, if he's just looking at this, this is somebody that I want to sit down and have a conversation with. Yeah. That's... That's hard to beat. Mm-hmm. Okay. Who already talks too, though. Yeah, so. that's true. <laughs> but I get it. I mean, I feel like I feel like Dan is probably like, let me go have a beer with Rocket and see what yep. he says. <laughs> so this is a, drink you actually, the table. actually, that's yeah. it's cool. It's like yeah. the question was if you can talk to an animal. Yeah, that's it doesn't matter question. if the animal can yeah. talk back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I talk to my dog all the yeah. time. Exactly. So Catherine Winston said Joey from War Horse probably. And I have to say that's probably no offense, guys, but that's my favorite answer. <laughs> Because that, would things be a, that horse was seen. So, yeah. Catherine, you, I dig that one. Serious conversation, that mm-hmm. would be. Jill, Jill, sorry, Jill Cathcart said a snail and a hummingbird. I'd be interested to hear what uh, the take on life is from one of the slowest animals in the world and one of the fastest animals in now the world. Now, that is a cool answer. Yep. Yeah, that's I, I dig it. And that brings me actually to a thought. Do you know what, what, what else would be a very interesting conversation? Hmm. With a bee. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you, they mm-hmm. live, what? A week, but what they kind live a of, whole life. What kind of a bee? Like um, a worker bee, or uh, a drone, uh, or a queen bee, no, or a honey bee? They're all. I think bees live a couple months. Different kinds. Of, flies or only fly. live about it. Fly fly, about flies a have a twenty-four hour lifespan. Okay, yeah. so yeah. let's give it. If they live a full lifetime, how would you learn from that? I don't know. I mean, that's uh, that, that's assuming they were giving them some kind of uh, sentience. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. they've so, got. Poo-poo hands. But let's Sorry, assume that's they all did. I remember. Let's, let's assume they do. Let's assume mm. they have 24 hours, and that would feel like our full lifetime, our 70, 80 years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. would feel the same as that 24 hours. Mm-hmm. Can, can you fathom would, that? I feel like it would really put things in perspective to for you. It would really show you, like, you have a, a good amount of time. As much mm-hmm. as we're like, life's too short. It's not that short in comparison not to a 24 a hour. Yeah. <laughs> so I almost want to put that on my list for the main event. We'll get to that in a minute. But <laughs> that actually, I think, is that's kind of deep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. would actually really like to get that perspective. I say, and let, let's pretend they have sentience. I don't know they We're do. We're deep diving for this one, y'all. But that's <laughs> I, that would make me want to be Dr. Doodle. That changes my whole perspective. I am in. Blies, you win. That then, if I could, Blies, yeah. then if I could turn around and I could go talk to a redwood, that would be the opposite of uh, the fly. I would like tree. to talk to Shell Mountain from NeverEnding Story. Oh, there you go. The rock biter? <laughs> no. Oh. Shell Mountain. It's been a long time. Because it's like a million years old. Oh, okay. It's, it, it's, it was asleep for the last 200 years. Mm. I don't want to talk to that. It was having a quick nap. A nap. <laughs> I don't want to talk to that horse, but the... The swamp shut bandit. up! Shut up! <laughs> shut up! You just triggered them. <laughs> I'm a snowflake right now, and yeah. you just oh. no, no. okay, dude. 
Artex. Oh my god. Artex. I'm done. I'm done. Don't be sad, Artex. But now I'm crying and I'm okay. okay. Shut up. Okay, stop it. <laughs> just stop it. Stop it. Let's move on to the main event because I'm just upset right okay, now. So... Actually, yeah, we got to close this. Close up our. We had two event. more. <laughs> oh. Wow. So... See what kind of a bad person <laughs> right. you are, Blies? Welcome these to 2020. People, you owe these two people a. A, a beverage. Of I'm sort. just sitting over here <laughs> eating popcorn. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we had one from our friendly neighborhood, Kaj. Oh. oh. His oh. was crypto. Can you imagine the juicy gossip you would get about Superman? Would he know that Superman is <gasps> Clark, Clark Kent? Kent? <laughs> <laughs> and then my the last one was my other favorite one from Jen McGee. Who's that? Some nice lady I know. Uh, the donkeys at the Grand Canyon tour. I think they would have some great stories to tell. Like, I think they'd be why bitter. Why are these fat Why did you put the 450-pound <laughs> guy on my back? Like I don- weigh 400 pounds. <laughs> it's like the donkeys <laughs> in Italy. <laughs> That's it. Hey, oh. That's okay, it. Thanks, done. everybody, for your listener feedback. Thanks, guys. We yeah, appreciate it. You. You know, we really appreciate it when you guys do this. I'm, you know, I can't say it enough. I'm... It's not just a line when I say how much we appreciate it. It it makes our show so much better. Oh, yeah. There, it, it's a more enjoyable experience. <laughs> yeah, because then we'd have to spend less time listening to Bly's and some of his... Uh, yeah. Whoa. Some sure. of his... Uh, some of his uh, Come up and, s- <laughs> <laughs> you know, and everyone is allowed to be mad at Blyze right now because of the never ending story. I'm not mad at you. Crap. I'm it not mad at him either. Yet, but we're we'll get we've you still there. got a lot more yeah. recording. Got ways to go. To go. <laughs> we still got another show after this, yo. Right. I'm sure at some point in time I'll be mad at you. <laughs> I'll get him, don't worry. <laughs> and with 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 that notation noted, let's move on to the main event. <laughs> Now it's time for the main event. On this version of the main event, um, Blyz wasn't very nice to us and made us redo our list four times. Yeah, it so did. yes, he did. Our, our, our main Only event, did my list once. Our Good main job, event Chase. question was: Name our top five animals you would want to speak with, and then, you know, he. Uh, Blige just grew a mustache started going nine no you did it wrong we do it again and again he already has a mustache he does (laughs) you can draw your own conclusions when I see with that one (laughs) yes so everything on us yeah I wanted to keep it to to real world animals just because we talk about mystical animals and talking with dragons and all these fun. all the time we do it all the time it's, it's let's, we, let's keep it grounded because we have this beautiful thing called an imagination eh, overrated <laughs> <laughs> yes we can tell i just ground my animals that's yeah, all it see? was J- yeah. jason jason listen i he listened. did a good job I understood I no you just got mad at me when i posted the wrong listener oh, feedback yeah. you question. Po- you post bad things all the time though so. wow and you lose listener <laughs> feedback y'all mean yeah. okay yep. so I guess I'll do my first of animals I would like to speak with. And my number five would be Paris Hilton's chihuahua named Gucci. I want to know if it is the most terrified thing in the world. Chihuahuas tend to be terrified anyway. But imagine being, I mean, how many times yep. has she left that thing? She oh, left yeah. it at her grandmother's house like three times and said she was kidnapped. Uh, I that that has got to be just the most abused. But and I want to talk to her and tell her everything's going to be okay. <laughs> everything's going to be okay. There, be Gucci. Right. <laughs> you don't have to be in that handbag forever, Gucci. Right. That that's I, I want to just Stop I want putting your dog in a purse. Yeah. I'm not a big Chihuahua <laughs> fan. I don't hate them. But you do like Chihuahua. And I it's like going to be like, listen, bald man. But that I hear that all the time. But I feel and I so still bad. end up at grandma's. I feel so bad for that little puppy, and I want to hug it and take it and bring it into safety and let it know everything's going to be okay. <laughs> so, yes, I would like to talk to Gucci. Okay. Wow, that I was had deeper to, than I thought it was going to be. I had to redo mine. So, I would like to talk to the Picasso triggerfish that bit me when I was in Hawaii and find out why it bit me. Because you looked delicious. You bit your finger? It bit my leg. Oh, it bit your leg. It bit my leg. And I swear, if it could talk, when I looked at it, it literally was saying, what are you going to do about it? Okay, lady? no, wait, 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 wait. Did it, like... It nip your me. leg or did the teeth no, like no, sink in no, no. and it took a chunk there was blood drawn really yeah this sucker was mad at me 
<laughs> Man, if you had read, if you well, had, the, every single guidebook says, oh, they're very docile. That's a lie. Yeah, but they why are did, not? Why did you get into the tank? That's all I have to say. I you was know? at the beach. Oh, okay. the ocean. So get out my ocean. I was in the ocean. So humans actually, aren't meant to be I in the ocean. Get out of that fish's toilet. It's not your I fault. I think it was. I think it was actually breeding season, and I was too close to the nest of eggs. But oh, there you go. Yeah. So get away from my baby. I'd still like to ask it why it felt the need to bite me when there was you eighty-seven. Got, you just other got an tourists. answer. <laughs> there were eighty-seven other tourists to choose from. Why me? Because woman, you look delicious. And I swear, it, when it bit me, I turned around to try to figure out what had just done, what had happened to my leg, and I look over, and I swear to God, this fish was looking at me going what are you gonna do about it and you said what kind of fish what it's a picasso trigger fish how big are they was it triggered About that big? Yeah, they're, they're about they're yay not, big. Yeah, they're yeah. not very big. It's a big. measurement, yay I, big. I love that we're doing this on an audio podcast. No. Right, and I nine, nine inches, hand. about nine inches long. If you really want me to be fancy, I'll say it in Hawaiian, but it's the no, it's about it's about nine inches long. <laughs> oh, can you say it in Hawaiian? I can. You want me to? Yes. Huma huma nuku nuku ah. You're making that up. I am not. No, making No, she's it not. Up. I've heard that before. Yeah. Huh. I'm not making it up. Say it again. Isn't that the huma nuku nuku kapua ah? Isn't that the state fish? Yeah. The state fish. Yeah. And is it like real colorful? Yeah, there's variants of it. Nuka bu- humu humu oh nuku nuku kapua a. Okay, Blaze, what's yours, Blaze? <laughs> That's cool. Uh, Milani will like that one. <laughs> mine number five is the horse because I feel like the horse. Like all horses are just. Just a, like a just a horse. horse. A no, horse. just a horse. Okay. Um, I feel Such like it's different experiences from horse to horse. It's mm-hmm. just one of the most abused animals. <laughs> From the very no. beginning. Are you kidding me? We have used horses as a tool since, like, the beginning of man. Wars have been fought on the backs of horses. Elephants, too. Horses. Elephants, but I think horses more horses than Horses are treated any better other. than any other animal on the planet right now. Right now? Yeah. For Okay, so for the last 50 years, we've been treating horses nice, but what no, no, about wait, the wait. Last No, this is interesting. So you want to know how they feel about being, Humans. Yeah. being kind of used mm-hmm. by people. I don't think there's an oral history of them remembering back, well, my grandpa, you know. They might. Was, you don't know. Yeah, they you might. Don't know. No, I'm with you on yeah. this. Horse okay. genealogy, it's a thing. <laughs> In fact, <laughs> a, lot, <laughs> a lot of my answers are similar, like wanting to know, like going back yeah. through the generations. Mm-hmm. Like what you think. That's, I like that. That's good. You're wrong. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> no, you're, I'm with you, man. My number five would be any flying bird, strictly to talk about flight, okay? Because man's entire inspiration for wanting to defy gravity, I mean, you could say insects, but more likely it was birds, mm-hmm. watching birds and trying to figure out the aerodynamics of birds. Yep. And I'd be curious to know what insights birds have about flying so we could finally do it without machines <laughs> help us figure it out how do we do the wing thing how do we design those way how do we 3d print those wings to really make us do bird type flight mm-hmm. isn't that everybody's dream don't people dream about that sort of thing i'm into that fair enough yeah okay my number four i would like to talk to basically all the pit bulls because you know they got to be buttholes. I guess it is the owner as well. You know the the, but yeah. Boy, you are right on the verge of pissing off. I can't even tell you how many I, people. Oh, I absolutely know. I am. That's why I'm sitting on that line. Can we say because that yes, off yes, or? people that that breed animals to do that kind of thing are garbage human beings. That that's not a question. But you know, I mean, I think that that I feel like they would have this attitude. Nah. I oh, don't yeah. think so. I disagree. Yeah. Uh, everyone that I've ever met that's treated well and raised well is the sweetest dog I've ever met. One of them. I've met quite a few of the butthole ones that were treated very well. And, saying, and you owned yeah. a cat, too, so he knows everything. <laughs> I'm not saying I know everything. Jeez, you're defensive today, man. Wow. Yeah. No, I, but I feel like there's an attitude that I would just like to be able to sit down and have a conversation. Okay. Fair enough? Mm-hmm. And then. So you guys with that? Cats and pit bulls have attitudes. I'm not Dove. saying all, but yeah, good good chunk. <laughs> so my number four is my one non-real animal because Blaze, you can suck it. I'm a rebel. Ooh. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's Lockjaw <laughs> from the Inhumans. Well, how's he going to talk if he has Lockjaw? <laughs> You're so funny. Okay, so why? Why that particular dog? 
Because I figure, you know, he gets to teleport. Is he, he really a dog? He hangs he out. He's a dog. He well, is a dog. He, he is, but he also has the antenna. Is he, he a dog or is he an inhuman? He's, he's an, an inhuman, 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 inhuman dog. He's not a dog. dog. So he's not a dog, isn't it? He's a uh, inhuman. But he's a dog. But he's not a dog. He just takes the shape of a dog. Yeah. But he's a dog. He's a dog. He's, he's a canine. Black okay, are we going to do the semantic argument all day? Right, he's yeah, I've got better things to do with my day than that. Black Bolt's pet. So, yeah. so how how does he know when um, Black Bull wants him to come to him? It's, it's all telepathic, man. You know Black Bull can't speak. It's a fair question. You know Black Bull can't speak. But mm-hmm. I would just like that to know. You know he's got all sorts of terrible gossip about the rest of the Inhumans. Because you know they talk in front of him because he doesn't talk. So fair I'd like enough. to know. All right. That's all I have to say about that. Cool. Be- <laughs> Listen I like more that. Than an- no, speak, I like they it. Say. I like that answer. Yeah, I like Black Dog. Uh, my number four is Kangaroos. Uh, kind of for the same reason that Dub had pit bulls, mm-hmm. is I think they would have a, a way about them. Mm-hmm. I think they would be. I don't even want to say that they would necessarily be mean. They can be aggressive. But it's no, mean. I know they can it's be a aggressive. General attitude. Yeah, I think it's like, like a bro see, attitude. I don't like that. Like, I'm agreeing with you, but yeah. That's, <laughs> have you seen the video? You see the what I'm talking? Just like a smugness. It's just an yeah. attitude. Okay. <laughs> if that's I, the one you would if I may, to, right? I, I've, been, I've been to Australia <laughs> uh-huh. and I've, I've dealt with them. In person, fed them, things like that. Most of the ones that you'd see that um, interact with people will be the girls. Mm-hmm. Um, the bulls are very mean. Are they? Yes. They yeah. can be. Yeah. They'd be like, do you want to talk? They'd be like the rough, tough sailors that mm-hmm. you don't want to talk to. They'd be Bluto from Popeye. Okay. That's who male <laughs> kangaroos would be. Totally. Yeah. So that, that, yeah, that would be mine. Totally. Cool. All right. My number four would be, and this would be at a safe distance, but I would want to talk to crocodiles. I'm serious. I want to know from an a, one of the apex predators that isn't a mammal. Because mm-hmm. you're talking about, again, a real mystery. You know, they don't, reptiles don't show a lot of expression. They don't have a very big range of mood. I would very much like to know what goes on in the mind of something that would have millions of years of genealogy and history going back to the dinosaurs. Yeah. And the stories that they've passed on from generation to generation. <laughs> They could tell you some stuff. Mm-hmm. They could tell you how things have changed. Nice. From a distance. <laughs> God is watching us. Um, number, my number three, I would like to talk to the first truly domesticated dog. What made him make that choice that changed human history yep. by being that? I, mm-hmm. th- and that dog had to be something special. It's the wolf. wolf. The wolf said, get out of here. But that, and... that to me would be the most, that would be such an interesting conversation it would to be. have. Yeah. It my number three is Coco the gorilla. Um, you can, can talk to Coco. Yeah, but it's it's just it's sign language. But I and then you know it's still there's that communication difference between the sign language and, and whatnot. I would like her to actually have speech to be able to know what she's Amy. really talking about. Amy loves you, right? Oh, you know what she's really you know talking, movie I'm talking about. about yeah. yeah. So I mean, it'd be really interesting to see Fair what enough. to be able to communicate on her level would be interesting. Well, Neat. I think that's too easy. I'm sorry. I'll walk away from that. Get out yeah, of here. Do it. Too easy. Next. <laughs> All right. My number two is <laughs> the uh, sloth. Um, really? Number, yeah. Number, number three. He's never seen Do- Zootopia. I right, have seen number, Zootopia. We, we are on number three. Oh, we on? Yes. Oh, I'm yeah. so sorry. Yeah, yeah. So that's my number two, guys. Just a spoiler alert. Oh, uh, spoiler okay, alert. We, we, you ru- you move some things around. <laughs> yeah. My uh, my number three is the ant eater. Just because <laughs> the weirdest animal, the weirdest animal in the world, <laughs> and why why are you eating all those but ants? I love the Pink Panther version of the ant eater. Yes. <laughs> hey there, guy. What you doing there, man? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, just for the sake of that's just a weird animal. Fair enough. I love Would you life. ask them how they feel about their long? I would ask and... them how they felt about their place within the food chain, and ask them like, do other animals like make fun of you? Mm-hmm. I don't the think they the do animal. because no, I, don't, no. I don't, don't think they communicate with things that aren't ant eaters. Maybe well, they except don't. for that screaming ants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no! I think they're cruel and they enjoy the screaming It's the, of the sucker! Ants. <laughs> they enjoy the screams. <laughs> Run down the hill. That's the only response nice. that you get from them. I enjoy the screams. Nice. My number three would be elephants, which was mentioned I love like, them. earlier. I they'd be pretty intelligent to talk to. Um, yeah. yeah, because they are so intelligent and they already. So long. Um, you know, they're in that. They're on that level that's below. You know, your great apes but higher than a lot of other things again they they, they know history yeah. they mm-hmm. have um, memories um i would really like to know 
again, from a pretty safe distance, what goes <laughs> on in an elephant's mind uh -huh. um, and how too, they, they feel about people. Yes. Because talk about, again, like the horse elephant comparison is uh -huh. a good one. How do elephants feel about the small creatures it. that have used them through history? Yeah. Nice. Um, my number two, I would like to talk to an eagle. Um, I think, <laughs> well, going back to attitude, I think yeah. they were just, there's something just incredible about eagles. Uh -huh. Um I think they're they're predators, so I don't Specific think they'd be kind very of nice. Eagle or just bald. eagles in general? Bald, because I'm bald. Nice. Um, no, well, that's very just patriotic of you. That's just something <laughs> I've always loved growing up. It was just my my they're dad. Beautiful. My dad has an eagle obsession. So. Nice. Yeah. But it's yeah. That's I. I think that would be the most. It may not be. Uh, it may not teach you anything, but I think it would be the best conversation you'd ever have in your life. One of the yeah. coolest things I've seen, just to let you know, um, place I go camping. Um, Every year they have uh, around the lake, there's the osprey, there's fish eagles that territorially fish in the lake. Mm -hmm. And every now and then a bald eagle comes around and they just fight each other. Mm -hmm. But the ospreys are not as big. So it's like hit and run kind of thing. And the eagle like when they dive toward the eagle to try to get it, the eagle turns upside down. Oh, and I've the talons before, come yeah. up, and the osprey like ditch. It's like I would one of the most amazing things to watch. Yeah, actually, that's crazy. Nice. My number two is rhinos because they're my favorite animal. It's it's it's, it's the other living dinosaur that and crocodile. Mm -hmm. are yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's so few of them left anymore mm -hmm. that I just I would kind of like to have a chat with them. I but imagine they're, they're pretty pissed. Yeah, that's my I'd guess. Say so they've been almost poached into existence. Yes extinction so all right so back to my number two sloths um zootopia yeah zootopia <laughs> um i would wonder if if they really did talk like that or flash, if flash hundred yard dash what if what if like their movement is just an act yeah <laughs> well i'll tell you what to, I, i'm not trying to be gross but the cutest thing you'll ever see in your life the thing that'll make you more happy when you see a sloth right after they go to the bathroom they have the just goofiest smile. That's it's like the, the most weirdest relieved. comment you've yeah, ever this made. Yeah, this is this <laughs> is kind of off the rails. No, I'm not trying to be gross. I watched a documentary, and it looked like that weird smile on Zootopia. Are we, if you, if you see Aww. Dub in the same situation, it's the same look. Yeah. Well, are yeah. we allowed to vote him out? Because no. this, yeah, that's he's the boss. That's a bit much. <laughs> we can't vote him off the well, island. Never mind, because he rules the island. <laughs> My number two has a similarity to elephants due to like a an enhanced intelligence, and that would be dolphins. I absolutely would want to get into those minds. They can, they're considered, so, if not the smartest animal on the planet, like the top tier. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, being that they are so close to the top, yeah, I'd be very interested to understand and know like the level of complexity. Yeah, and they know the secrets of the ocean that we can only guess. I would love they to know. They probably know why that fish bit me. They, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly right. They would absolutely know. I'm so editing myself right now. <laughs> My number one, I have a feeling that there's going to be kind of a trend on this one. Yeah. My number one would be, I mean, for very um, selfish reasons, I would, would like to be able to talk and be talked back to from my, my dog, Loki, because that would make me happy. Mm-hmm. Would you ask him why he keeps barking at me when I come in here after three years every single time? Um, no, I get it. I completely get it. <laughs> <laughs> my number one is the same. I would like to talk to my my little Chihuahua chaplain. Um, although I'm sure all he would be saying all day is just, "Is she coming home? When is she coming home?" I feel like, "Where'd she go? Did she? What? What?" I don't know where she's at. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm so stressed out. Because he's a chihuahua and he's stressed out all the time. That's probably really close to accurate. Right. He's like the most neurotic little monster. I've never had it. Just, so just, just, like, just like his mama, huh? <laughs> he's even <laughs> less chill than me. Wow. Yeah, it's insane. You met him. You know. know. You saw him when he came over. He's like, why are these big people in my house? Oh, my God. These, what are these people doing? Why are they got? Can I, I got to go watch and watch I'm and change the battery. I'm fixing your car. Right, Leave like me I took, alone. I took him outside in the garage when we were with, when. You were fixing the battery, and he's looking. I'm like, "What are they doing? Why are they in there? What are they are, is, the, is the car gonna eat them? I don't know what's going on." I mean, it, was, <laughs> it was a lot going on for him that day. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna fall right in line and say that my number one is my dogs, Amora and Rocky. Um, 
Rocky has like the best old man syndrome right now. <laughs> where he's he, not RBF. He, he oh really yeah, does. he just is like, go away. Like I don't, I'm not dealing with this. He's such a crank. Yeah, I love he's him. So cranky, and I love him for it. And Amora is just That's the sweetest. <laughs> um, she's just the sweetest dog. Yeah, she takes after Tara. She's, not a, after you. she's a sweetie. <laughs> yeah, she just wants to she's a cuddle to cuddle baby. and snuggle and play and just. She thinks that she's the size of Rocky because that's the only dog she's ever yeah, really been has, around. It has no concept. <laughs> yeah. So I would love to just be able to talk to both of them. Nice. Nice. Uh, no surprise. I've kind of already said this. Cats. <laughs> um, my cat well, Bubba. Well, they have a movie about it. You can see my, it. No, my cat, my cat Bubba is like 14. <laughs> so he's got some wisdom. Yeah. And he had a whole life before we got him because we adopted him out of the shelter when he was nine. So... I'd be curious about his former life, and uh, but then again, I said the minds of cats in general, because like I said, they already can speak English. They just don't tell us. <laughs> That's one of um, the reasons I like to talk to Chaplin. I'd like to know what the family that had it before me did to him. Yeah, of course. That's always good stuff. Mm-hmm. But they, yeah, they're they they're very mystery or mysterious. You know, they always kind of look like they want to kill you. Do they actually? <laughs> you know, and do they just not do it because they weigh ten pounds and we keep picking them up and cuddling them i don't know but um yeah cats nice okay if that's a show guys hey hey we're doing something a little different today if you can do us a favor and just listen to the end and you can hear all of our where to find us because yeah. todd todd came in and we cut a new uh, outro so yeah listen to that so yeah i'm not gonna bore you with the whole thing but uh, as always go to the amazon and use our link and go to the red bubble and buy stuff, buy stuff. Mm-hmm. it helps and mm-hmm. we got Patreon coming very, 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 very soon. Yes. Hopefully by next recording session. We'll see. Close. Okay. And until next time, I'm Dub. I'm Miss Geeky Page. I'm Blize. I'm PB and Jason. Keep, Keep on, on geeking, geeking on. Lassie, come home. What? Timmy's in the well? You have been listening to the latest episode of the I Heart Geek Show. Make sure you visit our website at www.iheartgeekshow.com. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you check us out on YouTube, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And keep on geeking on to all of you geek rock stars. 